Hi y'all, I'm Chris with DFW Airstream and this is your 2021 Airstream Atlas. We're going to begin right here under the hood. I will mention that the secondary hood release is just to the left of the Mercedes symbol. You'll simply lift straight up and secure it with this stalk right here. Of course, like most passenger vehicles, the initial hood release is in the driver foot well and when we get around to that side, we'll go over that. Starting here, this is the intake for your air conditioner. Now there used to be a filter here, but they have done away with that for the 2021 models. This is your engine coolant, and this is where you would fill the engine oil. Over here is gonna be your diesel emissions fluid fill. It is a 4.7 gallon tank, and it should give you somewhere in the neighborhood of 10,000 miles for range. There is a way we can set up the dash so that you can monitor the tank level. We've got your engine air filter and then the actual engine oil filter is under this little cap here. That will be maintenance at a Mercedes dealership. This is gonna be your positive jump start point. And the negative one is over here on the inside of the fender. It's this little brass post. This is also where you would connect a trickle charger. Now the engine battery is underneath the driver footwell, but it is difficult to access. You have to pull a couple of panels free, which is why they have provided this external point here. We've got your washer fluid container here. And then these are manual air valves to fill the rear air suspension. In case the onboard air compressor has stopped functioning and you needed to get it up on a flat bed to have it serviced, you can add an airline to that and inflate the rear airbags on your own. Make sure when you go to close the hood that you don't just try to pull it shut. You must lift it up and release the stock. And I'll also point out right here, they've designed the front bumper to have a step in case you needed to wash the windshield or maybe change the wipers. We'll come around here to the driver area. The first thing I'll point out in here is going to be your diesel fuel fill port. It's a 24 and a half gallon tank and it is designed so that you can close the main door to prevent the fumes from here from entering the cab. Also your gross vehicle weight and tire pressure sticker. It's 80, I'm sorry, 61 PSI on all your tires and the gross weight is 11,030 pounds. Over here on this side, we have a button that is labeled battery assist. When you hold this button in, it will link the house and the chassis batteries. If you have managed to discharge the engine battery you can use the house battery to help jumpstart the engine. Also here on the door, we have your heated seats, the unlock, and a little bit of memory for your seat adjustment. Down below, we've got a first aid kit, and this is a strobe light. In case you've broken down, you can set that aside and warn people that you're on the side of the road. We'll move back here and we'll open up these side storage compartments. Now this one is actually one large storage compartment with two doors. So there is no center divider here. And these will lock when you lock the door with the key fob and they will also unlock with the key fob. This is gonna be the exhaust for your on-demand water heater. So when you're running hot water, you will have some heat coming out of this and also below we have the exhaust for the onboard generator. This rear panel is gonna be your service access panel. On the left hand side here is where your shore power will come in. This is your 110 volt at 30 amps camp power. This is the cord that comes with this vehicle. It is 25 feet long and it can be set up to come in through this lower port so that you can close the service port door. Also here we have a switch that reads fresh water valve and a cable inlet. If you're staying at a camping site that offers cable, you can attach a coax here. It's already wired directly into the TV. When we get inside, I'll show you how to get that signal to pass through. And next to that, this red switch will allow you to fill the onboard water tank through your city water connection. Now on this trailer, van rather, 
The city water connection also fills the onboard fresh tank, but this is where you would attach your water line at your camping site for your on-demand water. This has a built-in 50 PSI regulator, so do not add an external regulator. It is plumbed through the onboard water pump, so if the site you're staying at has weak water pressure, you can turn on the onboard water pump and it will boost the pressure at your faucets. Also on this particular van, you will fill your fresh water tank through this port. So with your water connected, press this red switch and it will divert the water into the fresh water tank. There is another way to do this inside with the multiplex system, which is how I'm gonna recommend you do that. So when we're going over the Firefly, I'll talk about that again. Also, you have an outdoor shower here and that's what the little wand in the bag is for. Now, if you're using this with the onboard water tank, to get pressure here, you will have to use the onboard water pump. However, the city water connection provides pressure throughout the van here as well. Down below is your LP service. From the left to the right, you have your fill port, the on-off switch, and the bleeder valve. When you need to use a propane appliance in the trailer, you must first turn this switch on to allow the gas to flow from the tank to the device. When you store it, I will recommend that you turn this off. We'll leave that on for now so that we can test a few things when we get inside. And finally, on the right hand side, you have your waste clean out. The water fitting is your black tank clean out valve. When you attach your water line there, it puts water directly into the black tank, which is where the toilet empties. It's designed to help you flush that out. The first thing you're going to want to do is pull your water hose out here and place the end in the appropriate receptacle you will need to open this valve. You want to turn it parallel to allow the water to flow out. Perpendicular, of course, is closed. The next thing you'll do is open the black tank valve by pressing this switch right here. The little red light will come on to indicate that it's open, but you can actually hear the sound of the gate valve opening and closing. After you have got this open, introduce water coming in and turn on the waste pump here. You'll see the waste coming through here and you want to run it until the pump changes pitch. When you hear the pump change pitch, turn it off. Allow the water to backfill. Give it another minute, 90 seconds. Turn the pump back on. You'll continue to pump fresh water through here until that flow goes from pretty muddy to pretty clear. Once it's as clean as you can stand, close the valve. Allow it to backfill until the waste monitor inside reads about 5% full. At that point, turn your water off go inside and add your tank chemical straight into the toilet. You should allow the black waste tank to set around all the time with about this much water in it. So as you're driving, that water is sloshing around, helping keep the sides of the tank clean so that your sensors are good. And any of that waste will be trapped in that chemically treated water and it will exit the next time and your toilet will be ready for use. So at that point, you would only need to add a little water to the bowl and go ahead and do your business. Once you're finished with the black tank, come outside and do the gray tank second. You always do the gray tank second because that is mostly soapy water runoff from your sinks and showers, and it's going to help wash this pipe and tube out. Take care that you do not open both valves at the same time. If you do, the black tank will flow into the gray tank and contaminate it. And do not leave your valves open at your camping site. If you have the option to keep your sewer line attached, that's fine but leave the valves open until you're actually ready to empty the waste tanks. Once you're finished, wind this back and forth across the drum so that it sits on there flat. So as we come around the back, we'll eventually get your temporary tag mounted right here. And behind this plate is a two inch receiver with the 5,000 pound tow capacity. It also has a pre-wired seven pin. Come around the corner here. And this storage compartment is what they call the golf club storage compartment because it goes way up. That's the top right there. And in here, we're going to find the front window shades. So the front windshield shade is like any shade you've ever used before. Put it in place and use the factory sun visors to hold it. The side window shades are in here as well. They will simply magnet to the upper window frames. This storage compartment is going to lock independently of the other ones. It does have its own specific key. 
Below that, another storage compartment. In here, we've got a little rubber hose that will fit this little LP port below. This is a 25,000 pre-regulated service. It's gonna be good for a small camping stove or maybe a little space heater. Pretty much anything that was designed to run off those little one pound bottles and you will connect it by this little uh, quick connect for the van end and then this end is a half inch flared fitting. Next to that, we'll have the service access for your onboard generator. This one has a little latch that must be released initially. And of course, we've got a little stalk here that will hold it open. But this just allows us to work on your generator in case something's gone wrong or service it, changing the air filter and the oil and things like that. Above that, we have the exhaust for your furnace. Now down here in Texas, we have mud dauber wasps. They are attracted to all of the furnaces. They like the heat and the carbon dioxide exhaust that comes out. They wanna crawl inside there and build a little mud nest. I do sell a couple of little screens that will keep those bugs out. I highly recommend you purchase those. Next is gonna be the exhaust for the engine. And above that we have another storage compartment. This one is doubled and on the larger side we have some connections for TV. Let's go ahead and just turn that one on. So you've got a USB power source and a coax and an HDMI signal out as well as a dual 110. So you could set up a TV out here and use the onboard antenna to get your signal. All right, so just briefly we'll open the passenger door. I will mention in the passenger footwell is where you will find the tire changing tools, your jack and your tire wrench. Below the passenger seat, we have a manual control for your awning. Very simple, retract and extend. We'll hold it down and we'll begin to extend your awning out. This can also be controlled from the main system inside, which is what we'll use to close it. Note there is an LED light strip across the edge of the awning and also an LED light strip underneath the van. Now the awning is fully extended. You can pause it anywhere along its path if it is blocked by a tree or a pole, or if for some reason you did not want to have it out all the way. But I will also mention this awning has a wind sensor. So if it gets a large enough gust of wind, it will fold itself in on its own. Here's gonna be the main entry door for the house side of the van. You will note as we open the door, the step folds out automatically. However, right inside is a switch. The step hold switch will keep the step open when you close the door. So that way early in the morning, you don't have to wait for it to fold out. And once you open the door, it will be there ready for you. And this will be overridden when you start the vehicle and begin to take off. Although I will recommend that you walk around the van first to make sure that you have the awning in and the step up before you actually get in and take off. All right. So if you'll follow me inside, I will also point out the TV lift switches here. The TV will now come up on its own. And of course, below that is the main battery disconnect switch. So this is where you will turn the power to the house on and off. It is currently on. All right, so just forward of the main door is a control cabinet. In here, we're gonna find the power for the slide. We're gonna extend the slide by holding our finger on the button until it's finished extending.
just like so. The rest of the controls in here are going to be the solar monitoring panel. You do have 300 watts of onboard solar and it is an automatic solar system so as long as you have good sunlight it will be charging your batteries. Next is going to be your stabilizer jacks. First we'll turn the control panel on and simply press extend. They will extend on their own and level the van slightly. You want to make sure that you remember to bring these back up before you attempt to drive away. Just like so. Now I will mention when you go to retract these, they will also retract on their own. But once they have closed, you will have to hit that button a few times to make sure they are fully secure. Now we will click them up just a few more times until we're sure that they're fully retracted. And make sure you turn the control panel off when you're not actually running them up and down. Next to that is going to be your inverter control. You will have to press the on off button twice to get the inverter to come on. The first press just turns on the backlight and the second press actually turns on the inverter here. This is going to enable you to use every item in the van when you're not plugged into your shore power with the exception of the microwave, the air conditioner, and the heat pump. Those three items simply draw too much power. It is a 1000 watt inverter. Also, if you're plugged into your shore power, you do not need to have this on at all. Below is your sea level monitor. This will give you your battery monitoring. It is 13.3 volts. Also the status of your water tank. So the fresh tank is 25% full. The gray tank is 4% full, and the black waste tank is 19% full. The signal from here is repeated over here onto the Firefly. But if the Firefly isn't functioning, you can still look here, as this is where the signal originates. Below that is your diesel generator control. You'll first press the red button, and then you'll hold the green button to get it to start. Note that your power service switches from the 30 amp shore to the generator automatically. One thing about your generator is it is running off of the onboard fuel tank. It is plumbed so that it will not run your fuel tank empty. They set the, uh, the plumbing up so that if you have less than a quarter tank of diesel, the generator will not run. And then finally here we have your power control system. This will tell you what your power service is being utilized. Right now since we're plugged into 30 amp, it's telling us we have a 30 amp service. And then we'll switch over here to the Firefly system. The home screen is this screen and of course here at the top you have your light master on and off. You also have a few dimmer settings and a cinema setting will dim the lights and also lower the window shades and turn on the inverter. The awning can be retracted and extended from here. We will retract it from here just like we extended it from the main control below the seat.
All right, below that, you have your HVAC display. If it was actually turned on, you can adjust the temperature from here. We don't have that turned on yet. On the top right, you have your tank monitors. Propane tank is full. Below that, we have a tank heater switch. There is a heating pad on the bottom of the water tank, so if you're camping somewhere where it is incredibly cold, turn that on and it will keep your tanks from freezing, but it is not heating the water in your tanks. It's simply keeping them from freezing. Next to that, you have your auto fill switch. This is the same as the little red switch outside in the service compartment. Pressing this with your water connected to the city connection will fill the onboard water tank. This is where I am gonna recommend you fill the onboard water tank from because you can stand here and watch the status of the tank and when it is as full as you would like, simply press this button and it will stop filling that. One thing I will mention is if you fill it all the way to 100%, it will turn itself off automatically instead of overflowing the fresh water tank inside the van somewhere. Also, your water pump control is here as well. Let me go over here and close this faucet. All right. The water pump on this unit is an on-demand water pump. It will pressurize and stop, and it will not come back on until you create a demand. Just like so. Like I mentioned, the city water connection is plumbed through this water pump, so if the site you're staying at has weak water pressure, you can turn on the onboard pump, and it will boost the pressure at all your faucets. But if you have good water pressure from your city connection, you do not necessarily need the water pump on. Also note that you can use the van with the fresh tank completely empty if you know you're going somewhere that has a city water connection. You do not necessarily need to bring water with you. Below that, you have your generator. You can also start and stop the generator from here. But before you use this control, you will want to make sure that the red button is pushed in on the main generator control. Otherwise, the control on the Firefly system will be disabled. And it will let you know that you need to turn the red button on. That's what this little warning says here. Also, this generator <clears throat> has an automated generator start. So there are several parameters that you can set up to allow the generator to come on and off on its own. One of those is the level of your voltage. It can also be set up to come on when you try to turn on the HVAC system. And then of course below that we have your house and your chassis battery reading. The next option we'll have is the lights. Note when we hit the master all of the exterior lights stay on. They are independent of the master switch. Also take note that if we pick a couple of these lights at random, when we turn them back off, they will stay off on the master switch. Next is a repeat of the automated generator start. And then we have your HVAC control. The first option is gonna be the air conditioner. The air conditioner is only gonna work if you're plugged into your shore power or if you have the generator running. One thing I'll mention is <clears throat> the vehicle can have the generator running while you're headed down the road. So if you have passengers back here in the house area and it is really hot, if you wanted to run the overhead air conditioner, you will have to turn on the onboard generator to allow that to function as you're headed down the road. This van is designed to allow you to do that. You also have a heat pump that will reverse the polarity of the air conditioner. Also want to mention that it will only work down to 50 degrees ambient temperature. After that, you're going to want to switch to the furnace, which uses a propane heat source. Also take note that they can be run at the same time. And the auto button below them all will automatically switch between the air conditioner and the heat pump, depending on your ambient temperature and what you have set in here. So you've heard the overhead fan go off on the heat pump, but if you listen carefully, the fan for the furnace is still going. One other thing I will mention about the furnace is because you're using propane for a heat source, it will provide a much fuller heat for the van than the heat pump will 
Uh, most folks use the heat pump to just kind of knock the chill off of the air. Also note how I have turned the furnace off and if you were to listen very carefully, you would still hear the fan running. The furnace, when you turn it off, has to go through a two minute cool down cycle. You want to allow that cycle to complete before you take the power from the trailer. Next will be your shade control. The entertainment window shade is the shade behind the television and the slide out shade is found behind the Murphy bed. On the right hand side, you can open and close the slide out and the awning from here. Also note the skylight can be opened and closed from here. It is currently open. We will close that. And as we do, I will point out that it has a night shade and a day shade. Also, this, on, this skylight lid is plastic. You want to make sure you do not drive the van around with that open. You can also raise and lower the TV from this control as well. Finally, we have a few settings. You can change the onboard time. You could change it to Celsius. Also change the screen brightness. And it has a cleaning mode that will disable the screen and allow you to clean it for about 15 seconds and it will come back on on its own. Moving over, inside this storage compartment is where we'll find the power for the digital antenna. Now there is an omnidirectional digital antenna on the roof with the green light lit that is being powered. But this is actually a two-way switch. So if we press this button, the light goes out, it will allow the signal to pass through from the cable port on the side. One other thing you want to note is this is the one item on the van that will cause a battery drain with the master disconnect turned off. So if you're storing the van, make sure before you hit the disconnect, you turn that off initially. It will take about six weeks, but it will draw your house batteries down. Over on the left, this little key is associated with the Airstream Connect. This van is pre-wired for Airstream Connect. If you wanted that option, we'll simply add the antenna on the roof, attach the router, and that will be used to turn it on and off. The light in here is independent so you will have to turn it off on your own. It will not go off when you close the door. One other thing I will mention about the Firefly is that there are several repeater panels throughout the van. We have another one right here by the Murphy bed, and another one in here in the galley, and a final one back in the bathroom. To get the Murphy bed down, the first thing you're going to do is extend the couch. This control is here on the side. Now, if we were doing this for real, we would want to get rid of the cushions and the armrests to allow the Murphy bed to fold flat. There is a latch towards the back on the side. You'll pull that at the same time that you pull on the Murphy bed to release it. Here's your little headrest right here. And then of course we have map lights that also have a little USB charge port on them. So two places to charge your phone while you're sleeping. And of course the slide out shade window is here as well. And of course the latch for that is right here. So you'll have to pull that towards you as you pull down on the bed. And then to fold the couch back up is this control here. Note that you've got a dual USB charge port and also the foot extension, one on each side. Here in the middle, we're going to find a drawer. No, it's not a drawer anymore, it's a cabinet now. But in here, we've got your table legs and also the table tops in a little case back there. All right, so I'm going to grab one of your TV remotes. We'll turn on your TV briefly. We don't have a signal because I've got the antenna turned off. Turn that back on and suddenly we'll have a signal. One thing I will mention 
other than the fact that you have a Bose sound bar here at the top, is that if you leave the TV running, when you go to close it, it does not turn off. So you want to make sure you turn the TV off before you drop it down into its travel rest. Also in this drawer, we've hidden a couple of items. You do have a 110 plug tester, but the most important one is this little ratchet and driver. This little toolkit is what you will use to return the awning if you have lost power. On the forward end of the awning is a little cover that you'll pop off and that little extension will slip right in and you will simply crank the awning back in manually. Down here is where we're going to find your main breaker and fuse box. All of your breakers are listed on this, these stickers here. The one at the very bottom is the GFI reset for all the plugs in the trailer. Will not simply turn back on just like at home, you must turn it all the way off. And it will also not reset if you're not connected to a 110 power source, which could be the generator. Above your fuses are just standard blade fuses, and they are listed on this sticker here. If one goes out, you will have a little red LED light that will appear that you can see through this window right here. All right, so up here we have your microwave. This microwave has a broiler and a convection feature. It will default as a microwave. Of course, the convection feature does circulate that heated air, and the broiler is actually this element here at the top. Bear in mind that the microwave is only available when you're plugged into your shore power or if your generator is on. You have a refrigerator here. This is a 12 volt refrigerator with a built-in inverter to allow it to operate off of the 110 circuit. The knob over here is your on off switch. Seven is gonna be the coldest. And then of course, zero is off. It will also get a little stiff when you turn it off to make sure that it does not accidentally turn itself back on. It's gonna take an hour and a half to two hours to get your refrigerator completely cold. And if you have gotten it completely cold, it will stay cold in there for five or six hours provided you leave the door shut without an external power source. Please note, there is a tab here designed to keep the door shut as you're traveling. But when you store this van, use this to prop the door open to prevent mold and mildew. Same thing with the freezer below. The tab is on the bottom of this one. And of course the knob is right here in the middle. All right, <clears throat> coming over here, like I mentioned, Another repeater, pan repeater panel for your C-Zone. Below here we have a little trash can. The window in the galley has a nightshade and also a day shade and can be cranked open like so. To light the range, you will turn the knob to light and hold it in, click the igniter. See if I can do this one without burning my arm. Now, if you've been cooking on these and they're nice and hot, give them a chance to cool before you close the lid. The lid is made of tempered glass and it could possibly shatter. I will also point out you have a little cutting board that's gonna pull out right here. And your pantry is here. Now this pantry has adjustable shelves. Please make sure you place all your, your heavy items down below because they will wind up there anyways and it will be difficult to get the door open. You need to tow, or drive rather, with the bathroom door open and secure with a little latch on the floor. Of course, if you wanted some privacy, you'll lift the latch and allow the door to close. It will magnet itself shut. This magnet is not enough to secure the door as you're driving. You wanna make sure that you use the little tab on the floor. All right, so behind that we have a little cabinet that has one tank chemical in there for you. Your toilet does have a bidet, and of course to use the toilet with either your city water connected or your water pump on, a partial step will fill the bowl. A full step will flush, and you do add your tank chemical straight down into the toilet. Also, before you drive off, use the toilet to relieve the pressure on the water lines. 
You do not want to drive around with the water lines fully pressured up because over time those vibrations could cause it to push a fitting. Your shower door has a little latch. You want to make sure that you use this to keep these doors shut. If they were to bang open or closed as you're traveling, they could damage themselves. And finally, the sink with your onboard, on demand rather, water heater. So of course 130 degrees all the way down to about 94. You will have to have the propane turned on. It takes about 30 seconds for us to feel warm water coming through and about another 10 or 15 for it to go from warm to hot. So within about a minute, you're gonna have hot water flowing here or in the shower or also at the sink in the kitchen. Finally, in this storage compartment, which is cedar lined, just like the one next to it, we're gonna find some bedding and a few towels. All right, on our way out, I will point out down below, we have an exhaust for your furnace. So anywhere you see the round black vent is in furnace exhaust. And also the intake for the furnace is this here. If you're using the furnace, make sure you do not bl block that with any blankets or towels. And finally above, we have a fantastic fan. Now we're gonna turn it all the way off. I will mention it has a powered lid motor switch here that does not work unless you have a speed selected here. The fan is controlled with this switch here. It is also a three speed fan. This is a crude thermostat, so in between these clicks, when the temperature crosses that threshold, it will turn itself off and on. These fans have a rain sensor, so if they gather, gather enough moisture, they will close on their own, and when they do, they will shut themselves off. Please note, here is a four amp glass fuse. If something stops the fan blade, it's gonna burn up that fuse instead of burning up the fan motor. Also here, we have your carbon and smoke detector. There are two AA batteries in here. When you pull this tab out, those batteries will be activated and they will be good for six months. Make sure you're cycling through those batteries every six months. You wanna make sure that that is in operating condition. Here is where we'll find your bag of service manuals. There is an independent service manual for every item in the van, including a separate service manual for the van itself. And you will also find the Mercedes service manuals for the engine and chassis portion of this trailer van. So if you'll head up here with me to the front, we'll go over a couple items on the dash. Before we get there, I will point out that you have your air suspension, suspension control panel right here. Of course, you can crank the air suspension up or down if you need to. The service button does disable it. Bear in mind, it is only in the rear. There is no front air suspension. So in the driver compartment, the first thing we'll talk about <clears throat> is your European style parking brake. European style means you can pull it up to engage it and then push it down out of the way to allow the seat to swivel. One thing to note about the seat swiveling is you wanna go one direction and then back. Do not ever rotate it around 360 degrees. The wiring for the airbag in the seat will get stretched and pulled. And you'll have to take it to Mercedes to have that reset. So you can rotate it one direction and then back. back to the position and disengage it just like a standard parking brake. All right, so <clears throat> we have one set of your keys here that goes inside the vehicle. We'll press this button twice to turn the engine on. And from here, we can access your onboard computer. These two buttons right here is what you'll use to navigate. This one in the center is the mouse, and this is your back button here. We'll scroll all the way to the left to the service, select. If we had any warning messages, they would be displayed right here. We don't have any currently. Below that is your diesel emissions fluid level. It is currently full, and the little red light will come on when you've reached the reserve. Service is due in 720 days. 
And of course your engine oil level is currently full. Finally, your diesel particulate filter is at 40%. When it reaches 100%, it will do an automatic regen. You want to do your best to continue to drive and allow that regen cycle to complete. You don't want to turn the vehicle on and off. It will prolong that regen cycle. Next will be your driver assist. So you can set this up through the onboard computer screen here to give you some information as you're headed down the road. It'll tell you your speed limit, um, turns that are coming up, and of course, any warnings as well. Trip odometer is next. We are currently at 172 miles. This is your fuel consumption. Range is 350 miles. Below that is your fuel consumption over time. And then one and two trip odometers. Finally, a digital speedometer at the bottom. Next is your navigation. So if you have set the navigation up, it will display on this center screen. It's telling us to wait because we do not have it set up. Of course, your radio can be accessed through here as well. The buttons on the right-hand side will control that. Any media devices that are connected will be displayed through here as well as any phone calls. Finally, we'll get to your settings. Two options here. The vehicle setting is going to have to do with the rain sensor. The windshield wipers are automatic. You can set it to very sensitive or not very sensitive. We'll leave it on the standard for the rain sensor. And below that in display and operation is where we can determine how you display your diesel emissions fluid. Currently it is set up to only display when it goes onto the reserve, but you can leave it down here at the bottom permanently if you so choose. So we'll take you back to your trip odometer and we'll move over here to the right. All right, so we're going to hit mute and we're going to go home. Starting at the left, if you were connected to the radio with your phone, you can control the phone through the onboard touchscreen instead of through your phone. Of course, the navigation is a Garmin based navigation. The key with this is you want to enter your address into this line in its entirety. So the street, ad street number and address, the city and the zip. As we saw, the radio pre-wired for Sirius XM. Any media devices could be controlled through here if we, were, if we had our phone connected. This is going to give you some vehicle information. So right now this is your fuel mileage. Gear temperature and oil temperature and the operator's manual can be downloaded to this screen as well. There is an onboard browser. This will also connect to a Wi-Fi signal. So if you're sitting in front of Starbucks, it does have the ability to surf the internet on their Wi-Fi. Finally, some vehicle settings. This is where we'll find your traction control and your lane departure. They will be on as a default. They can be turned off. You set up your driver assistance here, and then we have some vehicle settings here. Not a whole lot going on there change the lighting displays, and then finally in system is where we'll change your display or your controls, and you can enable and disable the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth from here. With the little blue light lit, it is enabled. Press that and it will disable the Wi-Fi. Note how the blue dot is not there. We will turn that back on so that it'll be available for you when you when it arrives. And that's how we'll turn the system off. Of course, you have some hard buttons here instead of the touch screens. And below that, of course, is your air conditioning control. Just like any Mercedes, it has the automatic setting. You can pick a temperature and you can select a fan speed if you wish. One thing to note, finally, is if you have a if you have the step out, if you've left the awning out, or maybe the stabilizers down, or possibly the slide out, you will get a travel warning here. So if you see this red light lit up, that means that one of the items has not been stowed properly. You can look at the, the Firefly display, and it will tell you which one it is. Um, 
Make sure that you cycle through all four of those items. It's only ever going to be the main entry door is open, the awning was left out, the slide out was left out, or your stabilizer jacks are down. And that's it, guys. I hope you enjoy your 2021 Atlas. Thanks for watching our video. Be sure to drop a comment below if you have any questions or if there's any content you'd like to see. Go ahead and give us a like and subscribe to our channel. Thanks again from Airstream with the FW.